Hello everyone, my name is Pixelrifts and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. Today we're back here in the Survival Guide world, the legit Survival Guide world, but I have now trimmed out all of the unnecessary chunks as demonstrated in yesterday's video and we are now working with a very, very trimmed down survival guide world. There are chunks out there that will probably be mostly the same but may have a chance to generate some new stuff now and I'm excited about that opportunity. But today, despite it being update day, I'm not going to be able to make a video about the update because I release these videos early in the morning for me. It's like 11 a.m. when this video goes out so I haven't had a chance to play in the update if it did actually release on time today. However, today we're going to be spending an episode preparing for the update after a couple of points of business. For a start, thank you all so much for participating in the poll on last Friday's video where we basically declared the castle build done and I asked you guys to name it. So now, with 50% of the vote, I'm happy to announce that this is Brimstone Castle. Here we are <laughs> in Brimstone Castle at Founders Forge and I feel like the name is quite fitting really. I, I like it. Not to mention the fact that uh, there seem to be a few zombies around. Hi! <laughs> Get out of the walls. You're not guarding anything in here. So aside from occasional visits from the undead, Brimstone Castle has one more feature that I figured I would show you guys and that is something that we put together on a live stream recently. Either side of the great hall section here we actually have two doors that lead down via a staircase to a sort of undercroft. I'm hesitating to call this a dungeon right now because there's nothing really dungeony about it. Instead, this right here is a section underneath the castle that houses the nether portal because after having completely redecorated the great hall into the sort of inspection hall, I... I realized that I had not set up the nether portal again and I needed access to my nether hub. So that's where this is now. This is going to change a little bit in appearance. I just kind of put together a rough idea of what I want to do on the stream, making the portal a little bit of a different shape. Obviously, the portal frame itself has to be rectangular or square, but I can add in these little obsidian accents around the place to make it look like the portal has a little bit more shape. So that is that. The portal is now in place. Also, when I come out of the nether, instead of going up these stairs and exiting through the Great Hall, I've actually installed a passageway through here to one of the castle towers via a water elevator, which, if I don't hit my head on the, uh, the sides here, actually takes me right up to the surface where I can come up to the castle tower and fly out from one of the open windows over here. So I like the fact that we now have a nice easy exit and it blends in quite well with the castle tower. It's a little bit discreet. It means I can uh, just get up here and, and launch myself with Elytra instead of worrying too much about making my way up through the castle and <laughs> also means I can avoid any creepers who might happen to be hanging around. One more thing to cover before we get into the main topic for today's episode and that is that when deleting the regions elsewhere in my Minecraft world, believe me, I have left no stone unturned. I have not forgotten about some of the stuff that is further out in my Minecraft world, including the three cats that I left over in the jungle. Yes, my friends, I have not forgotten about them. I do plan on returning to that area at some point to claim them, probably when we make a creeper farm and we go into the mechanic in which creepers can be scared by cats, which is very useful. We'll get into that sometime in future. But for now, please rest assured that I took notes of the region that those cats were in. The chunk they were in has not been deleted and the cats are still there waiting for us to come back and rescue them at a future date. And the reason I haven't done that sooner is because that would probably involve flying using Elytra to go and get them. And it's a little bit difficult returning them that way. But I have some plans for that. I have a few ways that we can potentially get those cats back over here. If we plan on building the creeper farm around here in the first place, that is definitely what we'll do. So don't worry, the cats are still very much there, very much tamed, sat in that tree waiting for me to return. So having spent yesterday trimming out regions of the world to focus on like the world generation aspects of what's coming in the new update, I figured we would spend today looking at the in-game repercussions of the new update and specifically how that relates to the stuff we've been gathering here and these chaps, villagers, are going to play a very important role here. Not only because, potentially, there is the, the restructuring to the villager trading system that is coming, potentially we could end up losing our mending trade. I don't know if that's actually the case. From what I understand, villagers have a chance of keeping the trades that they already have if they are villagers from an older version, like a, an, an, older, uh, an older world generation, I suppose. And I think... Mendelssohn will probably keep this mending trade. However, 
Just to cover our backs, I think what I'm going to do is grab a bunch of books, grab a bunch of emeralds, and trade as many mending books as I can, because I don't know exactly if that trade is going to go away or not, and being the paranoid chap that I am about this world, I kind of feel like I should give it a go. Since mending is such a valuable enchantment, especially I think mending is going to be the focus of this, but in case there are any other trades that I think might be incredibly useful to have, we could always go and check out the villagers in my trading hall as well. I'm going to need to pay them a visit anyway, because I've got a couple of concerns about their safety when the next update rolls around. First of all, though, let's get to trading some mending books, and I think Mendelssohn will be quite happy to get some of those out of the way. Let's see how many we can get here. Okay, six mending books is not a bad start. Let's see if the trade can refresh. Nope, doesn't look like it. All right, let's let's uh, let's find something else to trade then. Glass. I could always use some more glass. There we go. Perfect. Three more books and there is still room for more trades. Let's get all of these in here. Nine mending books is a decent start though, I think. And that is why this guy is my absolute favorite villager of all time, because look at that. So we have a full shulker box of mending books now after trading him basically all the emeralds I had, but that's fine. We can easily rejuvenate, resupply our emeralds if we need to. And his trade is fully unlocked again. So we got an extra mending book plus the shulker box of mending trades here. I think we're gonna be okay. Thanks to one of our friends over at the trading hall, I also have a bunch of silk touch books in here, so I don't think I should need to worry too much about those, but let's at least leave that in here. We've got a channeling book in there as well. We've got two channeling books, so I don't need to worry too much about that. You know, as far as books are concerned, I think we're gonna be all right. I think we don't need to worry too much about those for the foreseeable future. And even if the trades do change up a little bit, there are neat ways of basically creating new librarians from existing villagers that will mean it's not going to be too difficult to get some additional book trades. Because one of the things we're going to be covering once the Village and Pillage update comes out is that villagers are tied to specific workstations. There are new blocks coming in and actually a couple of existing blocks are being repurposed as villager workstations and it means just making sure that the villager is around that type of workstation and has access to it will mean that they switch to that profession if they don't have a, an existing workstation that they're tied to already. So in theory, what we could do is get the lectern block, one of the new blocks that's coming into 1.14, and put it in front of each of these villagers and make sure they have a bed to sleep in, by the way, because that's another thing we need to figure out when it comes to a trading hall. But each of these villagers in here could be switched to a librarian if we make enough lecterns. And while the librarian's trades are going to be a little bit more random and unpredictable than they currently are, that does mean that we could potentially convert some of the cartographers we're not using into librarians, convert some of the leather workers and butchers that we don't need into librarians, or even switch their professions to something else that might be useful, like a toolsmith or an armorer. I think it's going to be a really interesting time, 1.14. It's going to be a good time to be a villager. Unfortunately, one of the bad things about being a villager in this next update is that it is the village and pillage update, and that means the inclusion of a new mob called pillagers. And pillagers will spawn randomly in patrols out in the world, and they won't typically spawn randomly too close to a village. However, this doesn't technically count as a village right now, and it won't when the new update comes out, even if we still had our villager breeder here and, and it was churning out new villagers because of their proximity to doors. Because the new village mechanics take into account the position of beds, workstations, and meeting points for these villagers to count it as a village. And so if this villager trading hall doesn't have all three of those things, potentially pillagers could spawn. Now, pillagers will spawn in a an area that has a low block light, but access to the sky. They're actually going to be able to spawn during the day, or at least in open terrain. So unfortunately for these villagers, it is entirely possible that a group of pillagers could spawn around here, and the pillagers are armed with long-range weapons like crossbows, and they will attack villagers. So it's no longer just going to be zombies that will attack villagers, pillagers will as well. And this is the first time there has been a ranged attack threat against the villagers. So here is my thing. I think we're probably actually going to batten down the hatches of this villager trading hall and close up all of these trap doors just in case a pillager patrol ends up coming through here and decides to take pot shots at them using these new crossbows because I think having all of the trap doors up like this will prevent the crossbows from hitting them even if they get a lucky shot on the corner and then 
up until that point, I will need to decide what to do with these villagers if we're going to move them to a different trading location, if we're going to basically make our own village with you know, workstations and beds around, or if we're going to rework this trading hall. But in the meantime, I think the villagers in the breeder over there are going to be safe because they've got blocks over their heads so that you won't have access to sky light. And it's all pretty well lit up in there as far as block light goes anyway. So I haven't done a good enough job lighting up this place, aside from obviously all of these redstone lamps around here. But as far as the rest of this area goes, the spawn proofing is actually fairly lax. I haven't put a huge amount of effort into it. Take, for example, this area in the center here. There's no lights aside from the redstone lamps around here. The block light from those isn't going to reach quite into the center here. And we have 15 skylight because there isn't a roof on this place and four block lights. That is basically the ideal spawning conditions for pillagers. So in theory, if I was a little bit like, if I wasn't careful enough, we could potentially have a pillager spawn in here. I think they might also have to spawn on grass or sand. I think they, they're supposed to be like roaming the plains out here, but that potentially means they could spawn over here in an extreme hills biome and a mountains biome on a grass patch like this. They'd notice the villagers over there, then they'd probably notice the villagers over here and they'd start to shoot at them with crossbows, potentially killing some of them. So we are going into turtle mode. <laughs> we are going full turtle with the village uh, trading hall over here until such time as I can figure out a safe way of removing the villagers from this and transporting them to their ideal environment. In the meantime, if I want to trade with them, I could always flip down the hatches and then flip them back up again. But in the long run, this isn't going to be the best villager trading setup. We will need to do something about that. And we couldn't be properly prepared for the village and pillage update without considering the changes that are going to happen to this. Iron farm designs are going to change in Minecraft 1.14 in the village and pillage update. And for better or for worse, we are going to have to do something about this iron farm. We're not going to tear the entire thing down today, not least because I can spend a little bit more time AFKing for iron. And don't worry, I've been collecting this pretty regularly. I have about nine stacks of iron blocks over here in my storage warehouse now. So we are, we are good for iron for the time being. I'm not a technical power player. I don't need a huge amount of iron. There we go. We're doing pretty well for iron so far. I also have a bunch of iron ore that I've dug up in my beacon speed mining sessions, but still we need to bear in mind that the iron farm is no longer going to work. And if you are at all concerned about the changes to this and you feel like it's going to be a big issue for your world, then maybe consider waiting a little while until after people have figured out better iron farm designs that work in the new update, because I can guarantee that's going to be some people's priority and that's going to happen pretty quickly. So <laughs> in the meantime, do not panic. I myself will probably have a video updating the iron farm at some point when I can be sure that the iron farm mechanics are something that I understand fully and that it's going to be something we can implement in this world. But it's going to require a lot of villagers. It's going to require a meeting point, some, some beds, some workstations and stuff like that. Basically everything that counts towards a village environment now, instead of just a bunch of cells with doors and individual villagers in each one. I know a little bit about the iron farming mechanics so far. I won't go into it right here and right now because it's not something I can demonstrate for you guys, but rest assured that we will be updating the iron farm when we, we have the opportunity to, when the update comes through, when I've done a little bit more research into how iron farms are going to work and when I've decided what we need to do with this whole structure. But it's going to be the end of an era, which is going to be slightly sad and kind of exciting at the same time. I was planning on converting this into a giant floating island, but that was before we knew that the mechanics were going to change. And so now I know that, and now I know that this whole design is probably going to be redundant in the next update, I think maybe we'll build a floating island somewhere else if I want to tackle that project and we will eventually bring down the iron farm. It's been a landmark of this series for a little while now. It's the first iron farm that I've ever built by myself and I'm going to miss it, but there are better and brighter things out there on the horizon when the update comes around. So for now, I'm probably going to do some AFKing for iron. While I'm at it, I might also AFK for mob drops around here because I do need a few of those. We are a little bit low on things like string and gunpowder is always going to be essential. Uh, we're going to work on a creeper farm design at some point soon. But I've also heard through the grapevine that potentially some mob spawning rates for hostile mobs might be reduced a little bit 
in this next update. Not in any great way. I think it's just a bug, but I think that's something that's going to affect us more or less immediately when the update comes out. So potentially we're going to have to uh, we're going to have to AFK for some drops here if we need to. But remember, as far as like bones and string goes, I've got a spider and skeleton farm that will still be perfectly operational from the spawners. In terms of gunpowder and stuff, I'm pretty well set up for the time being. We could always just go around killing creepers with a looting sword if we need some urgently. But it's always worth stockpiling some of this stuff before an update comes out, just in case anything happens that's going to break your existing farm. Farms. Are the creepers still dying up there? <laughs> it seems like they are. But anyway, yeah, the, the update is going to potentially require a bit of adaptation to some new mechanics here and there, to a couple of tweaks, to spawning algorithms and code and stuff like that, that could potentially mean farms like this don't do quite as effective as they currently are. So maybe in the grand scheme of things, we'll do a couple of updates. For now though, I think we'll probably be all right. A couple of other more optional things I might do in the meantime is spend a bit of time here lighting up a few more areas around my base because <laughs> while some aspects of it are quite well lit up, others not so much. And if the pillagers are going to be out here spawning in light conditions, but also with low block light, maybe it makes sense to put a few light sources, a few player made light sources around here so that I can be protected from pillager patrols because they have the potential to be a little bit of a nuisance. They have crossbow which means a lot of ranged attack and if you guys have had run-ins with a great deal of skeletons you will probably know that ranged attacks can be a little bit frustrating to deal with in this game. So while the torch grid might be a little bit ugly it probably makes sense to do a little bit more lighting up. If we can conceal some of that lighting so much the better but for now as a temporary measure it's probably best for our own safety. And one of the last things I would recommend doing for any new update really is to go and take a look at the Minecraft wiki and get familiar with some of the new features that are coming to the game specifically stuff like crafting recipes. It's always good to get a heads up on exactly what ingredients you'll need for crafting recipes. I for one know I'm looking forward to having lanterns in the game and those are mostly crafted with iron nuggets so it's worth having a fair amount of iron on you, it's worth having uh, access to iron ingots through stuff like zombie and skeleton spawners if your zombies and skeletons will drop armor but stuff like villager workstations are worth researching if you want to know how to craft those. Those are going to be pretty useful right off the bat and they're also really nice looking blocks so you'll want to know what required for those in future and obviously they'll be added to your recipe book once you've been able to craft them or once you've got the materials to craft them but it's always nice to know what that material is going to be ahead of time. So with all that wrapped up I think that's going to be it for this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. I think we are as prepared as we can be for Minecraft 1.14. I hope you guys are as well. Hope you folks are going to enjoy the village and pillage updates. We will hopefully have an episode from 1.14, the first episode from 1.14 tomorrow. I'm very much looking forward to it and I hope you guys are as well. Don't forget to leave a like on this episode if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more and I will see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.